watch TV, don't read magazines, don't even listen to NPR. Create your own. Today is Mystery Max. Well, it's Max Out Mystery. We have a Mystery Max, but it's another thing full of mystery cartoons. This is not mystery cartoons. Let me just explain it to you. So, today, we are doing a very special thing, and kind of last minute also, uh, we got this suggestion from one of our Max Squad members, Anime Bleach Babe. She sent us an email and said, hey, I got an idea. You should do a Max Out where everyone has to guess what all the cartoons have to do with each other. So that's exactly what we did. I took my hair out, I rolled up my sleeves, I put on my cut off BDU pants, and put together a wonderfully mysterious episode. Now, all of the cartoons today, except for the wraparounds. The wraparounds are the ones that go like in between episodes, like when the episode's done, and then we have like those short little episodes in the middle of like a different cartoon that's like five minutes long. Those are wraparounds, my friend. So, all of the cartoons, with the exception of the wraparounds, all have something to do with each other. They are related in some way. So, it is your job, Max Squad, to figure out what it is that relates them to one another. What do they all have in common? And, when you figure that out, send us an email to smc.maxout at gmail.com. Give us your answer. And when you give us your answer, we are going to put it in a pump. And we are going to draw a winner next week on the next Saturday morning a cartoon, a Max Out. That won't be a mystery Max Out, it's something else altogether. But send yours in so that you can be part of the contestant pool that we draw from to choose a winner and find out who will win a t-shirt, a package, oh my god! But that being said, that is all that needs to be said. We're just gonna go on and get right into it because we've given you all of the information. Now it's time to do your investigation. But first, before the investigation, what do we need to do, my Izzo friend? We need to go get us with the heat and fall of our favorite part of the balance breakfast. And go hang out with us here now, which means you have to go somewhere else and then come back to hang out with us. But stay with us between the magical, wonderful, mysterious hours of 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. Whoop! Eastern Standard Time! And of course, stay for the closer. Because we have a mystery closer today, there shall be no spoilers. But you have to stay and find out what it is. Stay with us! And always be with your friends, KJ and the Yizzle, in the one and only place that you want to be for mystery episodes. This is Saturday morning. One more time. This is the one and only. This time we'll be ready. Are you ready to go? Saturday morning, back to Max Out. Super K. Saturday Super K. <laughs> 
Saturday's Super Gade will return after these messages. After these messages, we'll be right back. Oh, 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 bright ideas and an Oreo cookie. It's a bright idea to dunk it or to crunch it or unscrew it or to lick it or to trick it. But no matter what you do, it's true. It's fun to munch a creamy, crunchy chocolate. O-R-E-O goes great with imagination. Put the yum in your creation. Oreo and Oreo Double Stuffed Cookies. Next to a big blast. I like the big taste of chocolate in a little Hershey's kiss. Mm. For the big taste you can't resist, it's the big taste of chocolate in a little Hershey's kiss. Next to my big car, I just love the big taste of chocolate in a little Hershey's kiss. Mm. The little kiss with the big taste. And now, back to Saturday's Super Cave. Take a cue from the cube. Hey, it's Cubert. Take a cue, me and you. And Cubert, me and you. And Cubert, me and you. And Cubert. Oh, Cubert, favorite down in Cubert. Cubert, Cubert, you're my favorite. Oh, Cubert, Cubert, you're my favorite. So this is where you and Cubert got trainee jobs as pooch groomers. It sure is the Cubert Dog Grooming Parlor. Ooh, whoever works out best gets a permanent job. Ain't that right, Coily? Yeah, and that's gonna be me. In a few days, I'll be running this place. Not so fast, Coily. I might get the full-time job, you know. Ooh, I'm worried. Really worried. He should be, because after you impress the Q-Boss by turning old Q-Spot into a show dog, you'll be working here, not coyly. Well, gee, Q-Ball, I can't groom your dog. This place is for paying customers only. Okay, okay, I can take a hint. Good luck, Hubert! Hey, thanks, guys. Um, hello, Q-Boss. Morning. I want you boys to wash Tiny. <laughs> hey, that's a cinch. Tiny probably weighs a couple of pounds. <laughs> uh, uh, you can wash him first, Cubert. Here. Okay, if you're afraid, I'll do it myself. I'm not afraid of nothing. And uh, let me have the munch. <laughs> Here, I'll have Mrs. Cumont's dog washed, dried, and groomed. Oh, I guess again. He's here now. Well, I'll fix him. <laughs> you can't go see Mrs. Cumont looking like that. I don't intend to. See you later. Oh, no, you don't. You're not getting to Mrs. Q up before me.
Are you just gonna let Hubert ace you out of a job? Are you kidding? I'm gonna knock him out of the picture. Yeah, what is it? What's going on? Oh, no. Bye bye, If you got a few minutes, how'd you like to share Pooh's Q spot? Not now. I gotta stop Coily. Drift! Coils again! I'm Hubert. <laughs> and I'm Coily. <laughs> I'll take good care of your dog, Mrs. Cumont. Oh, no, you won't. I'm going to take care of her dog. Oh, you scared off my precious little cute poodle. Get him back, or I'll make sure that you're both fired. Hey, come on. We got to catch Mrs. Cumont's dog. one of these cars. That snake really gets on my nerves. Cute poodles in the hat department. Hey, Cuber, if you got a minute, old Q-Spot sure could use your haircut. Not now, Q-Ball. I'll stop that mangy mutt. <laughs> the silly chase. You can work on Q-Spot instead of that dumb Q-Poodle. I can't, Q-Ball. If I don't find Q-Poodle, I'll lose my job. Follow me. <laughs> Get ready for takeoff. Okay, Cubit. Pull up alongside Q-Poodle so I can grab him. I'm not letting that hose nose beat me to Q-Poodle. <laughs> These rough lights get to me. You're not escaping me this time. around Cuba and grab that flea bag. Look out, Cuba! You've had it now, cucumber nose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice going, Cubert. Say, I better hold on to Q-Poodle so he doesn't take off again. <laughs> oh, down, boy, down! Give up, cause I'm gonna get ya! And we're gonna get you! Yeah! And when 
we get you, you'll be sorry we got you. <laughs> Don't worry, Q Poodle. I'll blast him with my slippy doos. Give up. I'm taking Q Poodle from you. Oh, yeah? some spare time. How about fixing up old Q spot? Oh, all right. <laughs> oh no. Here we go again. Saturday's Super Gate will return after these messages. After these messages, we'll be right back. Zeroni! You can taste the fun of make believe with Chef Boy or D. Mmm, animal shape. Power coaster! You can go anywhere you want to be with Chef Boy or D. Wavy macaroni tastes great. ABCs and one, two, threes. Thank goodness for the funnel. Chef Boy RD. And now back to Saturday's Super Cage. Face Ace, Defender of the Galaxy. Together with his partner Kimberly, they battle the forces of the evil force who seeks to conquer Earth with his dreaded Infanto Ray. <laughs> The call for help must have come from that old ship. Try contacting them again. Star pack to cruiser, come in. Is anyone there? <laughs> Offhand, I'd say yes. Let's go in for a closer look. Whoa! I don't like the look of this place. I'm not sure I even want to see whoever or whatever is in here. <laughs> Dexter, what are you doing? For 
thing I'm doing is to tell them to oil that creepy door! <laughs> Sure needs a new housekeeper. Maybe we can find some answers in here. Not again, Dexter. What did you drop? Looks like some robot parts. Good. Now, Robo will do the rest. you like to know my name, sweet thing? Not really. Hey, quit crowding me. It's Blatha. Figures. Who is Dregulon, Blatha? Where is he? Up in his lab. He invented a giant monster to take over the universe. Only it needs to be energized by a special life force. Who's? Well, now it's some jerk named Space Ace. Dragalon was going to use me, only now he thinks I'm too beautiful to be sacrificed. We must stop him from creating that monster. We're locked in here forever. Saturday's Supercade will return after these messages. After these messages, we'll be right back. Zod is here. This is Zod, enemy GoBot monster. Three batteries not included. GoBot sold separately. Zod is Psycho's monster. He's one mean eating machine built to conquer friendly GoBots. But if you can strike his hidden power switch with the laser lance. Now! Stop Zod dead his tracks. Until the next time he gets hungry. GoBot Zod monster comes with laser lance. Leader one and Psycho each sold separately. From Tonka. <laughs> Hey, Cookie Crook, what are you doing? <laughs> Scratching my back. He's trying to steal our Cookie Crook. Well, where's the Cookie Crook? Cookie Crook, you do anything to get the real cookie taste of Cookie Crisp video. I know, I know. It even looks like yeah. little chocolate chip cookies. But it stays crispy in milk. And it's part of this complete breakfast. Well, Cookie Crook, what do you have to say for yourself? I guess I'm not such a smart cookie, after all. If you like cookies, you'll love Cookie Crisp. 
Saturday's Super Jade will return. On Saturdays. Boy, this sure is fun. Enjoying an old farm. <laughs> Far out. With Jim Henson Rocket Babies. <laughs> this is CBS. <laughs> you all know Video Land, but now there's more. Panasonic integrated phone system and answering machine, auto dialing and remote, 9970. Or so they said to me, Fred, do something big, something really big for a video land, for Federated Video Land, something big. So what we did was we flew in a superstore, a giant superstore, just like Star Trek, Star Train, Star Fury, whatever. And, and from the sky, Federated fell from out of the sky, and video found Federated off into the plot. <laughs> Serving the disabled. And now, back to Saturday's Super Cave. Grab the Earthlings, Robo! Drag you on! Who's this? Where's Space Ace? He's closer than you think, Drag you on! Blotter, stay out of this! You leave my sexy alone! Let me go, you big boy! comes to rescue them, my monster and I will be waiting. <laughs> Lotta, I can't crawl with your mitts all over me. Will you please? Back off! Gladly! You grossed me out! What happened to my Dexie? Your Dexie got away! He's got all the luck. Kim, this looks like it might be Dragulon's lab. Lotta, where does Dragulon keep that energy drain machine of his? I'll only tell Dexter! Listen, Blotikins, tell me, and I promise, Dex will take you for an ice cream soda on Earth. You'll be sorry. An ice cream soda with my Dexie? It's a deal! Let's go! Space Ace, I didn't expect you so soon. Not so fast, Space Ace. I haven't even begun with you yet. At last, I can now transfer Space Ace's life force into my monster. The ultimate super monster will be under my command! It lives! Speak to me! How you doing, Draculon? Hey, this is weird! Oops! Looks like you need some adjustment. But first, show me how strong you are. Grab those two and toss them into deep space. No, Dexter! Don't do it! Hey, no problem. Now hurl them into deep space. No! No way! They're my friends! There must be an electrical short somewhere. Robo, put the monster back on the slab! Hey, that was a real trip, Drecky! It's you! Where space is? You leave Dexie alone! Hands off, Dexie Drugalon! Why 
didn't I think of this before? Now I'll personally take over the universe. Now Dregulon's life force is inside the monster. <laughs> Wait, Dexy. We can get by him in a space pod. <laughs> Perfect. Now let's get back to the lab. Make way! Oh! It's you again! Where's Dexy? Dexy's out to lunch, Blatter! Like you! <laughs> now you're cornered at last! I think you're the one who's cornered! <laughs> Time to put you out of commission, Monsty. Right, and destroy the machine. Let me out! You kidding? We're about to let you in. The cosmic jail. That old haunted shuttle will see no more victims. <laughs> my phantom ship! So far, my machinery is gone! <laughs> Forever! Let's get to the nitty gritty, Space Day! You promised me a date with Dexter! Well, I, uh. <laughs> Dex! You're back! Oh, I can't wait to have that ice cream soda you promised me! Will you mellow out, Blotta? I never promised you anything! Never. No, Dexter, you didn't. But Space Ace did. Now you've got to make good. Hi, this is Joey. Stay tuned for more fun and adventure with me and the Monkey Biz Gang. Coming up next on Kangaroo. Saturday's Super Cave will return after these messages. Now, it's here, the excitement, the adventure of a new force at breakfast. We'll call them C-3PO's. New C-3PO cereal from Kellogg's. Twin rings, haze together. For two crunches in every double O. A delicious part of this nutritious breakfast. Now you can experience the taste of Kellogg's C-3PO's. A crunchy new force at breakfast. May the force be with you. Here's Ronald McDonald in Fry Time. It's a good time for having a French fry. Any old time will do. <laughs> a very good day. Fry the golden crisp French fry. McDonald's makes them for you. Bye, Fry. A good time at noon time. A good time at night. Ready, ready, ready. The time is just right. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. <laughs> And now, back to Saturday's Super Cave. Joey, Joey, kangaroo. Kangaroo, in the zoo. Monkey making mayhem, boo boo, bad but best friends, bingo, bango, bungo, friends. This monkey business coming at you. So rock em, sock em, knock em, kanga too forever. So kanga happy Joey and Katie, the K.O. Cuckoo crazy, Cuckoo kangaroo. Thanks, Mr. Mailman. Wow, my magic kit finally arrived. I can hardly wait to show Sydney. Gee, maybe someday I'll be as good a magician as the great Zucchini and go on a world tour. Wish we had a magic kit, then we could magic us out of this chicken zoo. Wow, a magic wand. Hey, 
Watch where you point that thing. It might be loaded. Okay, let's see a trick. Ooh, ooh, yeah, make something disappear. Nah, uh -uh, but, but not me. Uh, me neither. How about I make something appear? Ta-da! Joey the Great's famous nut in the air trick. Wow, if I could do that, gathering nuts for the winter would be a snap. Well, Oliver, ooh, do you think it's gonna whitewash your birdhouse? Ooh, ooh. <laughs> me, that's who? Hey, Mr. Friendly, you want to see me do some magic? Well, how about conjuring up a paintbrush? Looks like I forgot mine. Uh, I think I need a little more practice to do that. In that case, I'd better go get one. Aha! That whitewash gives me an idea. Snag it, Bango. Ooh, ooh, okay. But, uh, why? We're gonna sneak out of the zoo covered in whitewash. Old Friendly will never recognize us. <laughs> Yeah. Give me a break, Zucchini. Even a squirrel needs time off. No lazy assistant is going to ruin my chance for the comeback. Well, what do you know? That's the zoo where my cousin Sydney lives. Hey, Sydney, let's see if I can change you into a rabbit. Eh, uh, maybe some other time, Joey. Uh, I, I gotta go. Uh, lots of nuts to sort. <laughs> yeah. What a mess. Well, I, I, I guess that kind of takes care of that plan, don't it, Bingo? Ah, uh, knock it off. <laughs> wow, I'm afraid magic isn't going to get that off. Yeah, I'd better go rinse myself off in the zoo fountain. Come on, Danny. I promise I'll give you two vacations next year. I'm tired of rehearsing. Why don't you start without me? Come back here! Wonder if that guy fell in whitewash, too. Aha! There you are, you little troublemaker! Gotcha! Hey, let go! Help! Say, what's the big idea? Don't play dumb. You know we need to rehearse. Rehearse what? I've been a squirrel all my life. I just do what comes naturally. That's not good enough. We're talking about Zucchini's World Tour. Hmm. Wonder where Sydney is. Gee, how did Zucchini find another white squirrel so fast? Oh well, at least you'll have someone to rehearse with while I visit Sydney. Hey, Sydney! Sydney? Where? Where? Stop kidding around, Sydney. And why haven't you gotten rid of that white gut yet? I'm not Sydney. I'm Danny. And that white gut happens to be my natural color. If that's not whitewash, then where's Sydney? Oh, boy. If Sydney's covered with whitewash, then I know where he is. Come on. There, Sydney. But what's Zucchini going to do to him? Watch this, Harry. I am going to appear to solve this squirrel in half. That's what I thought he was going to do. As your manager, Zucchini, I gotta tell you, that's a boring trick. <laughs> Not to me, it isn't. If you want to make a comeback, you better find something new and exciting. New and exciting? Hmm. Okay, I'll solve faster. Oh, no. Zucchini's never been very good at that trick. Then we better get hopping. It's time to bring down the curtain on this act. What the? What's going on? Hold on. You're sawing the wrong squirrel in half. Say, what is this? Hey, now that's a great gimmick, Zucchini, old boy. I think you're on to something. Uh, I, I am? Yes, I am. The squirrel is quicker than the hand, Zucchini. <laughs> We don't see about that. Oh, 
well. You can't blame a guy for trying. Thanks, Joey. We better go help Danny. Hey, Danny! Down here! Going down! Boy, downstairs is spooky! But it sure beats upstairs. We better find a way out before... Enough said. Let's go. Your new act is stupendous, Zucchini. Two white squirrels in a disappearing kangaroo. I'm glad you find it so exciting. Now I've got to find them. I should have been a magician. Poof. And the birdhouse is painted. Mr. Friendly, you're as bad as Joey. I'm just on my way to buy tickets for Zucchini the Great. Looks like I should buy one for you, too. Thanks, Katie. But I'm afraid this is the only magic wand that'll work for me. I hope we find a way out of here soon. Yeah. This place is filled with funny noises. Where are you, my little helpers? We aren't down here in the basement. A likely story. I don't think he believed you, Sydney. Look, up there. If we could only get to that skylight. Too bad this isn't a magic carpet. We could fly up to that skylight. I'm willing to give it a try. Carpet, up, up and away. Wow, Joey, how'd you do that? I don't know, but don't knock it. Joey didn't do it, he did. It is all done with wires, gentlemen. Hang on tight. I'm going to turn this into a real flying carpet. I'll help. Me too. Now what? Well, you know, I'm back to normal. Kazam! How'd you change that squirrel's color, Zucchini? That's very impressive! A uh, trade secret. It wasn't magic. It was whitewash. Why you do? Well, next time I'll paint you purple. Now, let us go. May I have three tickets, please? Hey, I'm a kangaroo, not a prop for some dopey magic act. That's Joey, Gangway. Watch closely, Harry. The top will meet the bottom of the case, and the kangaroo will emerge unharmed. That's fantastic. If the trick works, I've never actually tried it before. Hey, Mom! I'm in here! And we are here. Uh oh There goes my comeback. Unless it works the old levitation trick. Wow. Now I know what those zoogies must feel like. So, Katie, another kangaroo. I'm as surprised as you are. I'll have you out of there in no time, Joey. As soon as I figure out how. Allow me. I didn't rehearse all those years with the great zucchini for nothing. That white squirrel is better than zucchini. I can make him a big star. The old Indian rope is gonna get me out of this mess. Now I just climb up to the top and disappear. Two things. How to make myself disappear and my fear of my places. Come down here and let Joey go. Stay away from me. <laughs> I think I'm washed up. I agree, Zucchini. You mean no world tour? A world tour with Danny, the world's only squirrel magician. It'll be stupendous. Colossal! 
then I guess Danny will need an assistant. <laughs> Dry off and follow me, Zucchini. If you're going to be my assistant, you have to rehearse. Hey, Mom, want to see me do some magic? You can be my assistant, Sidney. You're kidding. How about that? I'm a real magician. I made Sidney disappear. <laughs> Saturday Supercade will return after these messages. Stay right there. Another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming up next. Constructs, you build. Constructs. Constructs and new space constructs with pieces that glow in the dark, each sold separately. Constructs! Stay tuned for loads of fast action on pole position with excitement around every turn of the road right after Saturday's Supercade. And now, back to Saturday's Supercade. And when I catch him, my traveling circus will have the greatest act on Earth. <laughs> Ooh, I'm gonna catch that watermelon munching gorilla. Oh, no! It's that rotten circus owner, Barney Todd. Oh, I better warn Mario. Harry, we've got to grab that ape before they do. All right, you overstuffed ball of fuzz. Give up. <laughs> Give up. <laughs> oh, <Okey -dokey. laughs> Oh, 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 bye bye. Well, what's up? Todd is dangerous. We've got to save him. Mario, our ape is in terrible danger. Not even Donkey Kong can do the triple trapeze flip. Come on, you miserable monkey. You're supposed to be the greatest. Let's see you prove it. Uh, 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 uh. You tell him, Donkey Kong. If you won't listen to me, maybe you'll listen to Trixie, your new trainer. I don't let anyone train Donkey Kong but me. 
trying to pull now. I think he got caught by the trapeze. And now he's afraid of oh, us. Oh. You get him cured in time for the big show. Or else. Don't worry, Mr. Todd. I'll take him to the circus vet. This is our chance to get him back. Take it easy, big boy. Really a good doctor. What is the trouble with the patient? He got caught on the head, doctor. Better test his reflexes. Hmm, <laughs> this is serious. Better lie down. Okay, take a deep breath. Oh, hey. What is it, Doctor? It's a bad case of cumulosis apoptosis. We have to operate. Sit. Bend the chest. Okay. Wants to know if he can let his breath out now. Sure. And now to take him to the hospital? I think we need a second opinion, Doctor. <laughs> Me too. Get <laughs> ahead. Take two bananas and call me in the morning. <laughs> Even if the doctor's given up, I haven't. I'll just coach you through the act. That's it, big boy. That's it. You'll be doing the triple trapeze flip in no time. It better be no time or it's big trouble for both of you. <laughs> oh boy, clown. <laughs> Donkey Kong, you can't stop rehearsing now. <gasps> yeah, he's calling for it. <laughs> in a circus, too. So much for that rescue attempt. It's the girl from that goody two-shoe circus. Grab her! <laughs> hey, Donkey Kong! You'll come down if you know what's good for your friend. Now you're gonna perform or else. 
No, Donkey Kong. It's too dangerous. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I gotta. Your new dressing room, Donkey Kong. As for you, you're fired. You can help me rescue Pauline for starters. Ladies and gentlemen, and now the amazing Donkey Kong. Oh, 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 me? Oh, uh, hey, muscle head. Why you? Pieces of priceless pictures are missing, and a very tiny robot holds the key to the baffling burglaries on pole position. Next. This is CBS. Stay tuned. Another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. Guaranteed to ride the 
We now return to Alvin and the Chipmunks.
special delivery for the Chipettes. Thank you. Quick, read it. Where do we open? Here are your roles on Broadway. Enjoy, enjoy. Signed, Uncle Harry. Onion rolls? Why, that's slimy. Sneaky. No good. Miserable agent. Where is that deadbeat? Probably long gone by now. Yeah, and with all our money, we've pawned our clothes, our suitcases. What else can go wrong? We have to pick up the boys in the morning. Oh, they can't find out about this. It's too humiliating. Do you see the girls? Sorry we're late. Welcome to the Big Apple. So, Brittany, where does your show open? On, uh, Broadway. Where else? What time does it start? Oh, uh, the usual time. Okay, Brittany, what's wrong? Wrong? Uh, what could be wrong? Only that we've been taken by a two-bit con artist. <laughs> we've got no show, no agent, and nobody! <laughs> I'll never forget his beady little eyes as long as I live. Beady eyes? And who could forget that smirk on his furry face? Furry face? He wasn't about this tall, was he? Yes. Uncle Harry! Yes! Just leave Uncle Harry to us. Now 
Calvin Simon Theater. The collection. Each in really cute outfits. You can collect them one at a time or in sets. Or pretend to play ball with Simon. But you know what's best about them? They're funny little faces. The Chipmunk Collectibles, Alvin, Simon, and Theodore, sold separately or in sets of three. New from Ideal. We're the Chipmunks. Alvin, Simon, and Theodore. Ideal's new Chipmunks Curtain Call Theater, some assembly required. Run about Simon and Alvin up for action, sold separately. The Chipmunks at sea. Simon through pirates. Look out, Simon. Uh-oh, a shark. Alvin to the rescue. Cowboys don't go on pirate ships. <laughs> the Chipmunks Curtain Call Theater comes with lots of props and backdrops. Chipmunk figures sold separately, new from Ideal. We now return to Alvin, that's me, and the Chipmunks. I've got the boat all ready for you. Her name's Tahoe Terror. Don't worry, Ed. We'll take good care of this baby. And thanks for letting us stay at your cabin. Any friend of Dave's is a friend of mine. Come on, kids. Hop in. When you bring her back, be sure to tie her up at the dock. I'll handle it personally. Here we go. Oh, wait. I almost forgot to give you something. Wonderful dinner. After we do the dishes, I think I'll take the boat out for a spin. Great idea, Dave. I'll get it ready. <sighs> no. Alvin, Dave wants to know if the boat's ready. It's... 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 it's what? Gone! Alvin, didn't you tie up the boat? I... 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 didn't. I'm going to take the boat out. Who wants to come? Nobody! Uh, it's getting dark, Dave. Leave it till tomorrow. Or maybe the day after. But the boat has lights. Uh, uh, first, could you help me with my, uh, science homework, Dave? It's summer. You don't have any homework. <laughs> it always pays to stay ahead. What are we going to do? Die an early death. We've got to get the boat back. Theodore said he's working on it right now. What? I got it! I got the boat! Theodore, what are you doing? I was trying to hook the boat. Hmm. You may be on to something, Theodore. 
So we dredge the lake bottom and come up with the boat. Simon, you're a genius. I gave him the idea. We better bring up the boat fast. I don't know how long the girls can keep Dave away. What a perfect day to go water skiing. No, it's not. Why not? Uh, uh because the boys are washing the boat. And uh, it won't be back till later. Much later. And tell you what, I'll go see how they're doing. Over. No way! I'm not throwing in the towel! What's your plan? It's coming to me! <laughs> Any time now! In that case, I'm going to think of something myself. Come on, girls! Hurry, guys! The new boat's on its way! Alvin, how can we afford a new boat? It only cost three dollars and fifty cents! Gee! What kind of boat can you get for three dollars and fifty cents? They call it Yacht in a Box. It's cheap because you have to assemble it yourself. Okay, who ordered the Yacht in a Box? I did. Sign here. You can unload our yacht over there. Heck, kid, I can unload her right here. Huh? Congratulations! You now own Yacht in a Box, a build-it-yourself, um, toy boat. Now it's over! Here, Alvin, this is addressed to you. Not now, Theodore. I'm too depressed. Simon! Theodore! Alvin! Uh-oh. <laughs> What's up, Dave? Where's the boat, fellas? Thanks, Brittany. When will it be back? In about 15 minutes. Okay, I'll see you in a few minutes. Brittany, have you lost your mind? No, I found a boat. I don't understand. We saw the Tahoe Terror sink. It must have been the wrong boat, because I found this one tied up across the lake. To think, some worm stole our boat and put us through when you need them. Right behind us. Okay, kid, why'd you steal the boat? I didn't mean to, Sheriff. Somebody told me it was our boat. Well, it looked like our boat. You're lucky, kid. The owner believes your story. She isn't pressing charges. You're free to go. Go? No way! We're safe right here. Are you crazy? Dave expected us home an hour ago. Exactly! At least in here, we'll have police protection! Come on, Alvin. We've got to tell Dave eventually. No! What's wrong with bread and water for 20 years? We'll get our own rooms? Plenty of exercise? All right, I want the whole story. Where's Ed's boat? You won a speech trophy last year. You tell him. He's your father. You tell him. Well, Dave, it's like this. <laughs> well, someone forgot to tie the boat up. And... And it... Well, it... Alvin! What? Like I was saying, Dave, there it is! Ed, the boat! It's here! But we saw it sink! <laughs> that old wreck? They sank it last week to start a reef. But why did you take the Tahoe Terror? I got her tuned up so you kids would have a fast boat for the ski contest. Uh, didn't you get my note? What note? The, the one I left in the mailbox. It was addressed to you. Oh, that note.
the owner of Harold's, it gives me great pleasure to award the grand prize to the chipmunks and the chipettes. I need a TV in my dressing room. I'll open the act in pink sequence. Congratulations! And what's this? A bologna and liver sandwich. I'm naming it after you. You mean we're not going to headline at Harold's? Sure you are. You made the cover of my menu. What do you say to that? Oh, uh, the words escape us. Another action-packed lineup from Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. But can we be, Jen? Landing on a strange planet to repair the space coop. Yeah, and what's worse, Jace? Getting caught by these glass goonies. Prisoners, you have a choice. Work in the glass mines or be imprisoned in glass prison spheres forever. Sorry, but we're not working in any glass mines. And you won't hold us in any glass prison spheres. Not when Space Ghost finds out about this. Space Ghost! So you are friends of the mighty Space Ghost? Well, don't count on his help. He won't find you. And if he did, I would deal with him as easily as I will now deal with you. They took our Inviso belts, but we still have our power packs, Jace. Right. We have to make a break for it. Let's go. Now! Guards, stop them! Hurry, Jan! You can't get away! This way! Jace! These walls! They're closing in on us! I told you! <laughs> no one escapes from Glassdoor! That's strange. I'm getting a signal on Jan and Jace's frequency, but it's wild. Sounds as though Blip's doing it. Blip! So it's you who's been sending the signal. Quiet, someone's coming. Get your Inviso power and follow me. That's a weird-looking glass man. Look, he's turned a ray on Jan and Chase's ship. So that's it. They want to destroy the evidence. Come on, let's follow that character. Incredible. That must be the fabled glass city of Glastor. And that must be where Jan and Chase are. Look, there's our boy, the glass man. He parked his ship and must be going in to report. Let's follow him. You decided to escape. Now you will be held in these glass prison spheres until you agree to work in the glass mines. You'll be sorry about this when Space Ghost gets here. As I said before, Space Ghost will not find you here. Oh, yeah? Well, don't bet on it. Guards, take the prisoners away. You have disposed of the prisoner ship? Yes, master. Good. Ah, uh, what's this? One guard and two shadows? Space Ghost! You'll never cease to amaze me, Space Ghost! Space Ghost, I know you're there! Good. And since you know I'm here, turn my friends loose and avoid a lot of trouble. You dare to threaten me? <laughs> there are other ways 
to avoid trouble, Space Ghost, and making you my prisoner is one of them. <laughs> you will stay in that glass shell and be taken to join your friends. That's freeing me the hard way, but thanks, Blip. Guards, use the glass rays! Sorry, glass tour. The odds are even. Your glass rays against my energy rays. Attack! Attack him! Sorry to have to do this, fellas. But have a ball. Attack him! Take him! I have other ideas, glass tour. You have destroyed everything I have worked for. You will pay! Look! There go your friends! Help! Help! Space Ghost, we're in here! There they go on an endless journey through space! I've got to stop them! But first I'll stop you, Space Ghost! Guards! Cut Space Ghost off in your guardships! <laughs> Uh-oh! The old squeeze play. This calls for hyperspeed. That must have been a shattering experience for you boys. Sorry I haven't time to pick up the pieces. The only way I can stop them is with my laser beam. Space Ghost is cutting through the glass with his laser ray. Good work, Space Ghost. Am I glad to get out of there? Now we've got to take care of Glastor and find Blip. Uh, relax, Space Ghost. Look, Blip has the situation under control. He must have turned Glastor's own glass sphere ray on him. Right, and he has Glastor all ready for delivery to the Space Patrol. <laughs> And the masters of the universe. I am Adam, Prince of Eternia and defender of the secrets of Castle Grayskull. This is Cringer, my fearless friend. Fabulous secret powers were revealed to me the day I held aloft my magic sword and said, By the power of Grayskull. became the mighty battle cat and I became He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe. Only three others share this secret. Our friends, the Sorceress, Man-at-Arms, and Orko. Together we defend Castle Grayskull from the evil forces of Skeletor. Looks like he's got you this time, Orko. Looks aren't everything. <laughs> what an 
tourney is going on. Better take cover, Your Highness. Come on, Cringer. We're needed. Oh, but, 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 but we could turn to stone. Why don't you go ahead without me? <laughs> I make a lousy statue. By the power of Grayskull! Are you all right, Tila? Yes, but my father. We must find a way to change him back. If there's a way, we'll find it. Oh, amazing. You turned him to stone. Of course I did, fur brain. If you think that's impressive, watch this! How about bringing stone to life? It's a good thing we were in the neighborhood. allies are more clever than you thought, Skeletor. <laughs> Not half as clever as you think. Wait here, Battle Cat. Whoever that is, an ion blast should scare him off. Oh, really? Demon, I'll take care of you. Danger. Emergency override. Automatic pilot engaged. Beginning landing procedure. find the answer to this, my friend. I don't understand all of Man-at-Arm's inventions, but my Earth science training should help us. Isn't there anything you can do, Mother? I'm afraid not. As far as I can tell, this will be permanent at sundown. Then there are only a few hours left. Come, my friend. I know of someone who can help us. Follow me, beast, and don't drop 
the Energizer. Someday you won't order me around, Skeletor. <laughs> Should be enough to bring Colossal to life. <laughs> Soon Eternia will be all mine. Can you help us, Sorceress? We must find the answer before nightfall, for it will be too late to save Man at Arms. This menace is larger than you imagine. You will walk through fire before it is over. Seek the fire jewels, He Man. Only they can save Man at Arms. I will need help on this quest. find them soon. The sun is almost down. Marco! What an awful place. Oh, it's gloomy, Tila, but at least it's not dangerous. Not dangerous, you say? Well, swamp bats are nasty, but they don't usually attack if you leave them alone. <sighs> swamp bat! Attack them! Beast Man! So, Skeletor is behind this. Maybe a flash ball will lighten our problem. And as for you, Beast Man, I'll deal with you later. Let's go! The fire jewels are the only things that can help us, and we're running out of time. Wait here and stand guard. This shouldn't take too long. and Bashasaurus vehicle each soul separately. Bash away! Bashasaurus, Bashasaurus. Next bash is on 
you, Bowface. Vasasaurus, new from the Masters of the Universe collection. Not for use with some figures, each toy sold separately. From Mattel. Land shark. The mighty land shark will have Mechanic for lunch. Yikes! Help! And she man for dessert. Help! Land shark. Land shark. Shark vehicle is new from the Masters of the Universe collection. Not for use with some figures. Action figures, each sold separately from Mattel. This complete breakfast. New from the Masters of the Universe collection. Get up, Battle Bones! The collector case that carries more than warriors, more than weapons. Your parents put it together. Battle! Battle Bones can also help you carry on the struggle. The struggle for. Bones collector carry case, new from Mattel, each toy sold separately. Call it Master Power. Now, some guys got it, some guys don't. Skeletor's got this creep spider. It's awful. Yeah, right. Sorry. When spiders like scrawl into sight, you better step aside, because he also bites. Maybe he'll get you. Maybe he won't. He's got Master Power. Now, some guys got it, some guys don't. Got it? Spidor's new from the Masters of the Youth is assembly to do. You need batteries, too. Other action figures sold separately from Mattel. Got it? Taylor, catch! Let's get these back to the sorceress. Time is running out. Who has awakened me? I, Skeletor, master of the universe, have awakened you. And I command you, capture Castle Grayskull. Capture Castle Grayskull. <laughs> At last, the secret of Grayskull will be mine. With these, we can defeat Skeletor. Now, the fire jewels have to be crushed into fine powder. I think that can be arranged. <laughs> Contact with this ray fuser will cause Skeletor's two rays to fuse into one. The new ray will give life back to our friends. Contact? The ray fuser will have to touch the controls for both rays to fuse them into one. And we'll make sure it does. Let's go! You two stand guard here while I pay a visit to Skeletor. Guess it's just you and me. That sounds like big trouble. Let's go! Snake Mountain. Colossus can capture Grayskull without our help. Colossus? 
Dinosaur will capture Grayskull, and I'll be there to watch! <laughs> Sun's almost down. It's now or never. Take cover. <laughs> now I've got you all. A green ray. You will pay for this, he man. That's the longest I've ever stayed still. There's trouble at Grayskull. Tila and Battlecat are there with a the sorceress. Let's go. And I thought nothing could be worse than the volcano. Yikes! 
only me. Oh, I know it was you. I knew it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Running at this time of the day. Yeah, me too. Makes me feel close to nature. The best part is that it's wonderful exercise. It's the best. Of course, one should check with a doctor before doing any heavy exercise. Right. And then start off just a little each day. I sure wish we could tell that to everybody. I think we just did. We did? Say for yourself. Remember, be good to your body, and it'll be good to you. Well said, He-Man. Now, I'll race you to the tree. Okay. Stay right there for another action-packed lineup of Saturday morning Cartoon Max Out.
to be able to go to the Metropolis 500, Uncle Gadget. Thanks for taking brain in me. You're welcome, Penny. I just wish I could enter. Of course, that wouldn't be fair, but I'd sure like that winner-takes-all million-dollar prize. I wonder if Dr. Claw might try for it. Maybe that's why the Chief sent for you. Dr. Claw? Ha, ha, ha. Don't be ridiculous, Penny. Claw! It's right on top of us! Well, this is certainly not safe driving. Hurry up! Don't let him pass, Uncle Gadget! Penny, I'm ashamed of you. A good driver never hogs the road. <laughs> it's safe to pass now! I hope you're right. Sing ho for the open highway! What is it, Brain? Uh oh! Uncle Gadget! Quiet, Penny. Good driving takes total concentration. The gadget van is amazing. It's so smooth, it's like riding on air. I've got a funny feeling. I didn't see that tunnel coming. I'd better turn on the lights. I think we're in trouble, Uncle Gadget. More trouble than you think, little girl. <laughs> Strange, this tunnel has a door. Uncle, it's not a tunnel. We've been trapped. Don't be silly, Penny. <gasps> Uncle! Yeah! Go, go, Gadget Brella! Go, go, Gadget Copter! This is getting pretty silly. Go, 
Go-Go Gadget wind sail. Go-Go Gadget emergency. I should check my equipment more often. Huh? The top secret gadget phone. Is that you, Chief? I'm under you. You're where? Gadget, get off me. Just a minute, Chief. I can't hear you very well. For the last time, Gadget, get off me. Gotcha, Chief. Right away. Sorry, Chief. Didn't mean to drop in on you like that. <laughs> Here. Read this. Dr. Claw has secretly entered the Metropolis 500. If he wins, he will use the million dollars to further finance crime. Your assignment is to enter the race and make sure he doesn't win. This message will self-destruct. Thanks, Chief. And don't worry, Chief. I'm always on duty. Uncle! Go, go, Gadget, come to spare. So long, Chief! I'm coming! Gotcha! Thanks, Uncle Gadget. Okay, jump. Hmm. Now, how do we get the Gadget van out? Doesn't a trailer have a back door? Aha! Penny, I think you've got it. Thanks for the idea, Penny. Now off to the race. Sign, please. Can we look around while you're signing up, Uncle Gadget? Okay, Penny, but be careful. Thanks, I've got my own pen. Don, I always put in too much ink. This'll help it. <laughs> Let's see now. Whoa, what is it, Brain? Where? Good going, Brain. That's the truck that tried to get us this morning. That must be Dr. Claus hiding. We've got to tell Uncle Gadget. After these messages, we'll be right back. Claus gonna blow up the police station. Go, go, Gadget, skates! Look out, jump! Go, go, Gadget, legs! Wowzers! Go, go, Gadget, hop! Need it in time! Take this, Gadget. It's a bomb! I'll handle this. You saved the police station, Uncle Gadget. Thanks, Penny. Collect all the Inspector Gadgets and friends, each sold separately, new from Tiger. I'll catch you next time, Gadget. This must be my garage. Uncle Gadget! Uncle Gadget, where are you? What's he doing down there? Here... Hi, Penny. I was just making a slight adjustment. We've been Dr. Claw! Don't be silly, Penny. Dr. Claw wouldn't hide around here. Not when he knows I'm on the job. But... Penny, I have to finish my work. You run along now. I understand, Uncle. Come on, we'd better keep an eye on that garage. Look! Uh-oh, he's a mad agent. He might be up to something, Brain. Follow him. Huh? Now there's a suspicious character. That didn't take long. Gadget always spots his man. Hmm. <laughs> the other cars. Okay, listen. 
After he does it, you fix it. Got that? Just as I thought, he's probably trying to sabotage the other cars. Let's see. Hmm. I don't see any sabotage. I can't hear what he's saying. Maybe I can get closer. My plan is working perfectly, Mad Cat. By sabotaging all the other cars, I'm sure to win the race. <laughs> Bad news, boss. Gadget snooping around. What? Never mind. I'll take care of him myself. <laughs> to get in. What's that? It smells like knockout gas. Are you... Are you... Oh, Brain. Are you... He stopped. Now's my chance. Go, go, Gadget Spring Lakes! <laughs> Stop in the name of the law! Stop! I've got you surrounded! Yipes! Stop that man! Halt! <laughs> it takes more than a door to keep Inspector Gadget out! To race time. <laughs> what happened? Where am I? I remember. Dr. Claw trapped me in here. But why is Uncle Gadget sticking in the wall? Just using my head, Penny, in the line of duty. <laughs> that door was a lot softer than I thought. Uncle Gadget, listen. Quiet, Penny. There's something happening. One, One minute, minute to race time. Take, Take your seat. seat. The race is starting. There's no time to lose. We'd better get down to the pits. We're Uncle Gadget's crew. The, the cars, cars are lined, lined up two abreast, abreast ready, ready to start. start. Excitement, Excitement is building. building. And, and we're just, just a few, few seconds, seconds away. away. And, and look, look. Here, Here comes one of, of the, the new entries. entries. Number, Number M1. M1. Entered, Entered by a mysterious new driver, Dr. Clawberry. Start, Start your engines. And, and winner, winner takes, takes all. all. Oh, my gosh! That's never happened before. It's always a first time. Here I come, ready or not. I'm sure the track is just up ahead. Oh, no! Get out of the way! Hey! Now I'm ready for action. And they're off. And the cars are moving away. Oh, God. Oh, God. 
Roger! Oh, no. Dr. Claw must have doctored the wheel. There's nothing like a race to stir the blood. Yahoo! Uncle? Penny, get off this racetrack. Maybe you better come in for a second. Don't be silly. The race just started. I think you might have something loose. Wowzers. Penny, I'm going to have to make an emergency pit stop. Good idea. It's really heating up out there. But the big surprise is car number M1. I don't know how he's doing it, but he's really moving up. It's easy, isn't it, Mad Cat? Wow! That's not very nice. I guess you'd call that a backfire. <laughs> Car M1 is still moving up. It looks like nobody is going to get near it today. Good as new. Okay, you're ready, Uncle Gadget. Go! Yep. Clear the decks! Number 35 is back on the track. Backwards on the track, that is. Wowzers! I'm getting left behind. This calls for an amazing action. Go, go, go to the wheel! Look at that car number 35 go! It's really moving. It's going to be a race after all. What? Gadget, open the backfire. That car is leaking. A good sportsman would plug it up for him. After all, winning isn't everything. <laughs> oh my gosh, that car's on fire. I'd better use my gadget snow gun to put it out. <laughs> I'll save you. Go, go, gadget snow gun. It's full of dirty snow. I'll get you for this. He's waving thank you. Think nothing of it, my good man. Glad to be of service. After these messages, we'll be right back. Apple Jacks made with real apples. An apple sweet part of this complete breakfast. Apple Jacks is the name. apple sweet taste its claim to fame. Fun to eat an apple sweet Kellogg's Apple Jacks. We're halfway through, and our two leaders, cars M1 and 35, are in the pits. Good going, Uncle Gadget. You gave Dr. Claw some of his own medicine. Dr. Claw? Where? Out there, in the race. There you go again. I told you, Penny, it's all your imagination. I've seen some very suspicious characters around here lately, but I won't believe Dr. Claw is here until I see him. I guess you're right. Boss, you can do it. Of course. Once I get Gadget out of the way, you know what to do. Right. Well, do it. Okay. Get ready to go. Ready. Let's do 
Excuse me, sir. Soft drink? Bloop, bloop, bloop. Thanks, that was refreshing. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, go! Which way did he go? Phew. And they're off again. This race is even. They're side by side. This is going to be a race to the finish. That's right. Gadgets finish. <laughs> Careful now, Inspector. You know you shouldn't drink and then drive. <laughs> uh oh, something seems to be wrong with number 35. Calling Inspector Gadget. Come in. Are you there? No. I went out for lunch. <laughs> you look at me. I can do a donut. What's the matter with him? Brain, this is no time for soft drinks. What? Uncle Gadget drank this. Somebody's put something funny in his drink. I'm a donkey. <laughs> There's only one chance. I'm gonna run the gadget mobile with my computer book. It's just about even. What a race! They're side by side, neck and neck. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. Last. Good. You're in my sights now, gadget. I see them. Blast it! <laughs> what a race! There's just one lap to go! Enough is not enough. The rocket jets blast off! <laughs> Disqualified for leaving the ground. What? What? The winner is Car 35, the Gadget Mobile. Wait a minute, folks. Chief Quimby says Car 35 is on official duty, so it can't accept any prizes. The winner is Car 17. Gadget does it again. You said it, Chief. He's great. Say, where's Dr. Claw? He's under arrest. I'll be back, Gadget. You'll pay for this. You'll pay. I'll get you. You weren't too disappointed about the prize, Uncle Gadget. You drove a great race. You know, Penny, it's funny, but I don't remember anything about it. That is funny. <laughs> it sure is. But here's something everyone should remember. Always buckle your seatbelts, just like all race drivers do. And don't bother the driver. Driving takes concentration. And most of all, don't drink strange drinks before you go driving.
gadget next time. Stay tuned, another action packed lineup of Saturday morning cartoon Max Out is coming your way. Back in the days when everyone was on the Snow White kick, scallywags and roustabouts had an easy time of it. Your money or your life? Oh, that's easy. You can take my wife. Not your wife, your life. It's funny you're my way, but take my purse. Statistics show that crime was rampant, especially in a tiny kingdom known as Easy Pickens. The people there used to set their watches by the number of robberies that occurred. What time do you have? Now, uh, let me see. The blacksmith is being held up, so it must be 11.15. This might have gone on indefinitely had it not been for the arrival of a jolly gentleman on a black donkey whose name was Mule. Oh, Mule! His name was Skylar Sugg, and his hobby was preventing crime. Your money or your wife? as if by magic, and the robber was thwarted. What's more, Mr. Sugg spent the next seven days in wielding his shillelagh in the cause of justice. Citizens of Easy Pickens, we owe a great deal to Skyler Sugg. It comes to $43.12. He has not only cleaned out the town, but he's cleaned out the town twice. Sugg opened a tiny but adequate detective agency and proceeded to solve any and all mysteries. I lost my pet cow, Mr. Sugg. You'll find him inside the counter at the butcher store at 89 cents a pound. He's on special, too. Somebody's been stealing eggs from our chicken house, Mr. Sugg. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you eating your breakfast. Be with you as soon as I finish these coddled eggs. And there's no doubt of it, fellow villagers. Skyler Sugg is our man of the year. Yay! I don't know what to say, Mr. Mayor. Yay! That's when the trouble started. It was one of the coldest winters on record. And a massive fog bank sprang up out of the lower valleys and blanketed the area. It didn't stay very long, but it left behind something. For there, in the middle of a once vacant meadow, stood a black castle. Must be one of those prefab jobs. It was then he noticed that not a door or a window was to be seen. You in there! Lower the drawbridge! No answer. Just the cold, clammy wind whistling through the turrets. Better send a wire to Alfred Hitchcock. The news spread through the town like wildfire, and by noon, everyone was standing before the huge castle. It's black magic, that's what it is. Nonsense, Mr. Mayor. Here, boys, take these torches and set fire to the place. But suppose there's a witch in there. We'll smoke her out. Under Sugg's direction, the villagers set the castle on fire. Or at least they tried to. The castle won't burn, Mr. Sugg. What do you mean it won't burn? You can smell the smoke. But the smoke was coming from a nearby forest. Why, it's supernatural, that's what it is. We set the castle on fire and the forest burns up. Hoppycock and Balderdash and all those other reindeer. The others were too frightened to move. Not Skylar Sugg, though. He carried a huge sack of gunpowder to the edge of the moat, lit a fuse, and then swung the sack around and around and finally flung it high over the castle wall. Watch. Any second now. Boom! They watched in breathless silence, waiting for the blast. And they got what they were waiting for. Unfortunately, it wasn't the castle that blew up. It was half the village. Sugg was in for a fight. Why? We better keep an eye on this castle. You'd better get some sleep, Skyler. You've got an awful lot of work to do tomorrow. I have got an awful lot of work to do right now. Extracting a magnifying glass from his pocket, Skyler left the warm fire to probe the back side of the castle. I'll take over while you're sleuthing. Nothing happened for about 10 or 15 minutes. Then, suddenly, the drawbridge of the castle slowly came down. What'll we do, Mr. Mayor? Only one thing to do. We've got to go inside. Brave words indeed. Thus the mayor, in fact, the remainder of the village, went slowly across the drawbridge and into the black castle. No sooner did they enter than the drawbridge mysteriously went up, sealing one and all inside. 
Dawn was late in coming, and so was Skylar Sugg, who had gotten lost in the pitch darkness and spent most of the night home in bed. Good morning, every... Uh, a chill ran through him. There was no one left. They were such wonderful folks. They were always trying to do something for me. His hair, what was left of it, stood on end. As once more, the drawbridge came down. Would he be able to summon enough courage to go in alone and uncover the secret? Heavens no! I am not going in there! Oh, go on, Mr. Sugg. We'll be right behind you. Go ahead. Now open the door. Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> Happy birthday, Skyler! Them's my kind of people. Concern them! Master, your guide in the realm of Dungeons and Dragons. Admit it, Hank. You don't have the faintest idea where we're going. Dungeon Master said we'd find a clue to help us get home in the forest with no trees. Dungeon Master's an airhead. How can you have a forest with no trees? Who knows what he really meant? That's it. You said the magic word, Presto. I did? It's not in O no. It's K N O W no. No trees. Trees that know. Oh, that's ridiculous. Trees don't know anything. I beg your pardon. Oh? Ah! Sounds like the young cavalier has met his first no tree. Come, my young adventurers are in need of some assistance. Uh oh! Danger! Get him! Dear me, buddy whoops. Well, I haven't done this in years. I'd almost forgotten how much fun this sort of thing can be. Your fun has ended, Dungeon Master. Of course I know the way out of this world. I'm a no-tree. I know everything there is to know. How do we know he knows? Ask me anything. Okay, who won the 1981 World Series? Simple, the Greywood Elves. The who? That thing doesn't know its trunk from a hole in the ground. However, if you're referring to the 81 World Series in your world, it was the Dodgers over the Yankees, four games to two. Gosh. He really does know. If you're such a great know-it-all, how do we get out of this place? Oh dear, your friend, the Dungeon Master, is in great danger. Who cares? How do we get home? Dungeon Master in trouble? We've got to help him. Oh, brother. Hey, wait a minute. Take him to the caves. There's 
something moving up ahead. And up there, too. Look! Someone tells me if these guys touch us, we'll get more than wards. Hello! We come in peace. A lot of good that's gonna do. It always works in the movies. So much for the movies. Time for some fireworks. Yuck! I hate frogs! Stay away from my sister, slime face! Hold this, fellas! Who are those guys? Who cares? Pull something out of that stupid hat of yours! Quick! What should I pull out? An army tank would be nice. Uh, uh, Kerbuffin's a ruffin. Here goes nothing. Ew. Giant fly. Must have been something rotten in my hat. The only thing rotten around here is your magic. Rotten or not, Presto's magic may just save our necks. Come on. <laughs> I think we lost them. And I think we lost ourselves, too. We've got to figure out how to find the Dungeon Master. Oh, what for? I say we forget about that little drip and try to buy our way home. With what? Fairy dust? No, money. you got to be kidding. American money is useless in this world. Oh, yeah? We'll see about that. The first person I see, I'm going to make an offer they can't refuse. <laughs> Some deal. What's he saying? How should I know? He's saying that those bullywugs took away the dungeon master and he knows where they went. How did you know that? I don't know. Give me a break. We're gonna listen to fairies now? We have no choice, Eric. Dungeon master may need our help. Lead on. I have plenty of. What have you got? I've got a jewel for the crown of your master. <gasps> is he? No. The red glow indicates a life force is still with him. Tell Venture that Dungeon Master is his for the right price. Now go. Very soon, Dungeon Master. You shall be worth ten times the trouble it took to capture you. Are you sure he said this is the way to Dungeon Master? Sure, I'm sure. I think. Say, uh, how, how far down is it, Presto? I don't know. I haven't looked. Well? Uh, nothing to worry about, Eric. If we fall, we won't hit the bottom. Oh, good. Because there isn't one. We'll have to turn back. Wait a minute. We can't give up yet. What would Dungeon Master do in a situation like this? Huh. Disappear. He says all we have to do is fly to the other side. In case he hadn't noticed, we don't have wings. No, but maybe Presto can conjure up some. Gee, I don't think so, Sheila. Lately, my hocus pocus has been out of focus. Give it a try, Presto. You can do it. Okay. Abracum, dabracum. Whoa! Nice trick. Hey, look! My hat's coming back. That's not all that's coming down. Ash. Take cover. Cover? What cover? Hey! Robbie! I knew we shouldn't listen to that fairy. They're gonna drop us. I don't believe it. They're friendly. Dungeon Master, close. He says Dungeon Master isn't far. Let's go. In there. Dungeon Master, in there. Are you sure he's in there? That cave. 
cave looks like it's alive. Ew. And something tells me it doesn't brush between meals. We owe it to Dungeon Master to go in there and help him. Wrong. I don't owe that little runt a thing. No way I'm going in there. I'm finding my own way out of this nightmare. Uh, Eric, wait! Don't worry. If I find a way home, I'll send help. The Marines. I hope we don't regret this. I regret it already. What was that? I don't know. It felt like the walls were moving. Maybe it's friendly. Maybe not. Presto! See if you can whip up a spell that'll stop that thing. Come on, Dad. Abracum, Zabracum. Oh, sorry. Oh, no! It's a dead end. I think this is it, guys. Your dungeon master has placed you in a dreadfully precarious position. You're playing the most phenomenal game ever created. Your skin grows cold from your first glimpse of the enormous beast. It's a product of your imagination. Survival depends on a quick, decisive move. Your choices are limited. Stand and fight, or run. Use your lightning bolt. Victory is yours. Win the treasure. TSR Hobbies. Dungeons and Dragons game. Products of your imagination. In the eerie world of deep, dark dungeons, mystery and magic seem real. There's good against evil with advanced Dungeons and Dragons action figures. War Duke, Kellogg, Strongheart, and Bronze Dragon, each sold separately. Beware, Strongheart. You will cast an evil spell and steal the treasure. Whoa, evil is no match for good. The treasure is safe. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons action figures. Kellogg, War Duke, Bronze Dragon, Strongheart, each sold separately from LJN. with us. Lord, want to welcome you. Did you hear that? He wants to welcome us. For a minute there, I thought we were in trouble. Where exactly are you welcoming us to? To the slave mines of Daramore. Where else? We're in trouble. <gasps> as bad as they look. There must be someone around this mud pit that can help me. There's someone! But, excuse me! I wonder if you... Yes. What 
is it? Ah, I have news. Yes? Warduke has captured Dungeon Master. Unlikely. I saw him. You saw him? Warduke says Dungeon Master is yours for the right price. The right price? Warduke has either become very brave or very stupid. However, I've waited many years for Dungeon Master to make this mistake. I will see to it that it's his last. Master's wrinkly little face right now. Say, Dungeon Master, did you? Uh, yeah. You know him? Know him? I don't. Know where he is? I do. You gotta tell us. Yeah, he'll rescue us. Rescue you? He will not. Unless him you rescue first. But how? Tell you I will. But promise me first, my people, you will free. Sure, sure. You got a deal. Now where is he? On the other side of this wall, he is. It'll take us 200 years to dig through that. Not with our weapons. Yeah, but how do we get him away from those slobs? Hello? Anyone? Well, I'd pay $1,000 for a taxi cab right now. <laughs> Then act really crazy. What? Not that bad. has left him, and for you, the game is over. I didn't mean to step in your nest, honest! Ah! Give me those weapons. Now! Okay, we're giving, we're giving. Ah! Go for it! <laughs> 
Eric? I thought you left us. Me? You kidding? I wouldn't leave you guys behind. Don't let them get away! Looking for me? Presto, try something! Anything! Right! Oh, Manish, come here! I hope this spell gets us out of here! <laughs> yeah! Prepare to meet your doom, young one! Not without a fight! Good morning! Dungeon Master! He's alive! I wonder if he's got a riddle that covers this. Your life force is stronger than I suspected, old one. As it should be. But not strong enough. Dungeon Master, look out! Evil energy is like evil thoughts. Change its direction and it changes to good. Your power has grown weak and feeble, old man. Harry, he will regain his form in a short time. Wait! I almost forgot about freeing the dwarves. Come on! Quickly, we have no time to waste. Follow me! Dungeon Master, look! <laughs> oh my! There's too many of them! We'll never stop all of them. Not to worry, you won't have to. Unless he wanted them to. <laughs> How come you don't use your power all the time? Yeah, like to get us out of here. The answer does not rest within one's power. It rests within one's self. Oh, brother, that's deep. Another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming up next. We are ready, Zorak, to display the power of Titanor, your champion. Proceed. First, to counter Space Ghost's Force Ray. Titanor's Force Ray. An indestructible sheet of styranitanium, completely shattered. And now, Zorak, watch how Titanor's Force Shield will counter Space Ghost Destructo Rays. Enough! Titanor can counter any of Space Ghost's forces? Yes, Master. Good. I will issue 
the challenge. <laughs> What's happening, Space Ghost? That blast came from the lab entrance. Let's take a look. What a mess! Look! Stamped on that piece of metal. Zorak's calling card. He must have gotten away the last time. Yes, and is back to threaten the peace of the universe. Right, Space Ghost. <laughs> and uh, I issue you a challenge. What is it, Zorak? Defeat my champion, Titanor, and I shall vanish, never to return. But if Titanor defeats you, you must do the same. I accept that challenge, Zorak. You know you can't trust him. I'll do anything to rid the universe of anyone as evil as Zorak. I still don't trust Zorak. Neither do I. There's Zorak's tin monster, but where's Zorak? I see you, Space Ghost. Are you ready? Ready when you are, Zorak. a real wallop. My force ray can't get through his force shield. <laughs> Let me demonstrate my Titanor force beam, uh, Space Ghost. I can't believe it. And I don't believe it, Jan. Come on, get the Invisible Power. We're going to check up on that Zora. Titanor is beating Space Ghost. Look! <laughs> Titanor's force has him helpless. Held by Titanor's locking array. I don't understand it. My strength is gone. <laughs> of course his strength is gone, because I have his real power bands. <laughs> Zorax got Space Ghost power bands. How did he get them? Never mind that. We've got to get them back. You are beaten, Space Ghost. Remember your promise. <laughs> Blip, I'm going to blast out the lights. You get those power bands, understand? Here goes. What happened? I don't know, Master. Space Ghost, wait! Where are you going? To keep my promise. I was beaten. No, you weren't. Look! Power bands. Your real ones. But these... They must have been substituted. Yes. That time someone sprayed sleep gas in the air intake vents of the space lab. Give them to me. I have a job to do. Look, Zorak. Space Ghost returns. He has his power bands back. Space Ghost, you gave your word. You were beaten. And you cheated, Zorak. All bets are off. Attack. Titanor, attack. You'll have to do better than that, Titanor. Have a pile drive raid. This is called cutting him down to size. Here's your super junk pile, Zorak. And now for you. Look, Zorak's ship. He's escaping. 
only for now. I shall never rest until I bring him to justice. Secret. I'm the only one who knows about tiny people living in our walls called the Littles. chicken. Oh gosh, look at my poor plane. There's no way to fix it now. We'd better get a tow truck before someone spots it. Get out the equipment, Peterson. Whatever we were tracking crashed in the field outside. Last, I've got something. I'm going to get those littles this time. All clear. I sure hope no big person has found your plane, Dinky. Don't worry, Lucy. I think I see it up ahead. Yep, right where I landed it. Grandpa Little, help me hook up this tow line. Hold this, will you? Dinky, start cranking when I say now. Now? Okay. Get me down from here, you idiot. <laughs> Sorry about that, Grandpa Little. I'll have you down in a second. Why, 
you. Come on, Tom. Let's start cleaning up this mess. <laughs> Lucy, watch out. That squirrel's after Dinky's pizza. <laughs> One bite and it'll be sorry. It's a trap. Huh? Whoa! Help! Let's get the tow truck driver and get out of here. Wait! You almost stepped on a booby trap. This way! You booby brain! You've got us good and trapped now! We've got something. Come on! Hold on, Grandpa! We'll have you out in a second! Go for it, Lucy! It's too heavy! Hurry, Peterson! Come on, Dinky! Grandpa Little, look! It's Dr. Hunter! Run for it, Lucy! What about me? I hope you've got a hard head! Peterson, look! It's Slim! Quick, bring the van. I'll follow them. I think they saw us! We've got to get home! Fast! It's my fault! My fault! How's this, Helen? It's an emergency! What's wrong? It's Hunter! He spotted us! And he may have followed us here! We're in big trouble! Big trouble! We've got to warn the others! This is Grandpa Little to Civil Defense Headquarters! Emergency! Emergency! Are you sure this is where they came? Yes. It's that boy's house again. Henry Big. Every time there are signs of the Littles, there's always that boy. He's hiding them all right. Only this time, I'm going to get them. Will you help us? If there's no other way, of course I'll help. Mr. and Mrs. Big, I'm sorry to disturb you. You're Dr. Hunter, aren't you? Please come in. You may remember, I was here with my assistant Peterson once before. Yes, checking for escaped lab mice, wasn't it? I might as well be truthful with you. I wasn't looking for mice. I was looking for these. What are they? I call them littles. But why are you telling us? This may come as a surprise to you, but I believe your son Henry has been hiding these little creatures for several months. That would explain some of his strange behavior. Capturing the littles would be the greatest archaeological discovery since the dinosaur. What can we do to help? Henry? I will, Lucy. Inky, careful where you're walking. <laughs> I thought I told you to empty this thing. I thought I did. You emptied your head is what you emptied. We're all packed. Where will we be going? As far away as we can. Brazil, maybe. Someone's coming. Quick, duck out of sight. Open up! What are you doing? Uh, nothing, Mom. What do you know about the Littles, Henry? 
Littles? Uh, what are Littles? Don't pretend you don't know. I've seen them this time, and I won't stop looking until I... I found something. Dinky's Airmail Pizza. My pizza? You've really gotten us into trouble this time, Dinky. A pizza no bigger than a quarter? Do you still deny knowing anything about the Littles? I don't know what you're talking about. I made that for a school project. Dr. Hunter, I'm picking up subnormal heartbeats coming from this vent. They found us! Let's get out of here! So that's where you're hiding them. No! I've got them this time. Stop it! There's nothing in there! Nothing, huh? Does this look like nothing? Uh, those are just accessories for my toy action figures. I play with them in the vent. Since when your toys have newspapers, Henry, with today's date on them? Mr. Big, in the interest of science, I'd like permission to break through your wall. No, don't let him do it, Dad! I'm afraid this is too important, Henry. gone. Tell him, Henry. No, you're wrong about the Littles. There's no such thing. Just think, Henry. When the world finds out about the Littles, you'll be famous. You know more about them than anyone. No, I don't. Of course you do. You've lived with them, talked with them. No, no, no. You're protecting them. What have the Littles ever done for you? Nothing. No, that's not true. They've helped me. They've even saved my... Tell us what you know, Henry. You will tour the world, Henry. Your friends will envy you. Will I get on TV? Order, order! If the big people find us, we're doomed! Where will we go? There's nowhere to hide. Come to order. I say we call off the evacuation. If Grandpa Little and his family were seen by Dr. Hunter, let them leave Grand Valley. But you don't know Dr. Hunter. He won't stop until he's captured us all. Psst, Tom, Lucy. Henry, what happened? They tried to make me talk, but I didn't say a thing. Milo's right. There's no need to evacuate. But what about Hunter? Them this time. It's Hunter! Help! Help! Lucy, watch out! No, help! I've got one. I finally got a little. He's got Milo. I'm not some bug you can put in a jar. Let me out. Hurry, we've got to clear this exit. Lucy, run! How could you do this to us, Henry? After all, we meant each other. But you don't understand. You'll be okay. I made a deal with Hunter. He promised I could keep you as pets. Come on, Lucy! Jump! Stop! If 
you don't want to stay with Henry, you're welcome to stay in my laboratory. <laughs> it's incredible. An entire race of tiny creatures living right under our feet. It's my fault. All my fault, Grandpa Little. If it weren't for my stupid pizzas, none of this would have happened. What's done is done, Dinky. Right now, we've got to figure a way to save the others. there he is. Let her go, you big fink! Now we'll see how much you weigh. 1.4 ounces. You touch one hair on our head and you'll regret it! Three and one-eighth inches. Incredible. According to their brainwave patterns, they're highly intelligent. I could have told you that, you ignorant baboon! Ah, there they are! They've been caged like animals! Hurry up with that string! Look, it's Grandpa and Dinky! <gasps> cool it, Dinky! It must be the pizza! Don't worry, I got it under control! <gasps> so... Trying to free your friends, are you? Quick, start swinging! Help! Grandpa! Peterson, get the other one. But I guess Grandpa wasn't so lucky. It's all my fault. Me and my stupid pizzas caused all this trouble. But I'm the only one who didn't get caught. Why me? discovery mean to the world? Why has it taken so long to find them? Just how many littles are there? I'm still gathering information on this newly discovered life form. As far as I can tell, there's... What's that? Incredible! 
trouble. One of the littles is grabbing pizzas from a tiny airplane. This will stop him. Grandpa Little. Your stupid pizzas have really finished us this time. Don't worry. You'll all live very comfortably where you're going. This is awful. What do we do? There's nothing we can do, Lucy. What's the matter with all of you? Stop staring at us! Look at those funny little people, Mommy! They have pointy ears and tails! <laughs> Imagine spending the rest of our lives living here, in the zoo! Don't worry, Lucy. At least we'll be together. Feeding time! No! Not that! Not pizza! Let me out of here! Do you hear me? Let me out! Let me as long as I live. I had a dream too, but a good one. I was driving a fantastic glass car, made simply with two empty thread spools for wheels, two flexible straws for axles, a clear plastic cup, and two rubber bands to hold it all together. Oh, I'm still dreaming. No, Lucy, I just followed your explanation and I did it. It's a great idea. Oh, I love it, Henry. Thanks.
Special Mission Force. Its purpose, to defend human freedom against COBRA, a ruthless terrorist organization determined to rule the world. He never gives up, he'll stay till the fight's won. G.I. Joe will dare. G.I. Joe will dare. G.I. Diagnostics complete, all communication circuits are functional, and now we can keep an eye on Cobra wherever that snake is. What's that, Breaker? I don't know. Something's pulling the satellite out of orbit. Not something, somebody. Cobra. And now, Commander, we have complete control of G.I. Joe's spy satellite. Excellent. Excellent. They shall soon see who has the superior technology. <laughs> it's no good, Flint. Cobra's ray is overriding my controls. We're losing her. Then scrub the mission. Bring the bird down. <laughs> Something's wrong. We no longer have control. But neither do they. They have forced re-entry. <laughs> Track the satellite and deploy troops to the landing site. We'll steal it from them on the ground. Oh, that's hidden for Africa. Give me an expanded view. Well, Cobra doesn't have the satellite. The problem is, neither do we. Look, if we have anyone in that landing sector, flash them a code red and warn them they're on their own till we can get there. Dusty, this is Spirit. Flint reports our satellite has crashed in this unexplored region. Yeah, roger on that, Spirit. Well, I know a little about this territory. There was an expedition in here about 20 years ago. The explorers are never seen again. No survivors? Uh, one fella named uh, Macintosh. But by the time they found him, he wasn't really playing with a full deck. They say he came back here and lives like a hermit. Dusty, I'm picking up something hot on the infrared scan. I read it, and it's no barbecue. That's Storm Shadow. You can be sure if it's Cobra. He's up to some snaky trick. Then let us land and help him clean up his act. I felt your presence, Spirit. And now you shall feel my wrath. Forget the wrath, Spirit. I've got a laser. Someone is in the cabin. You go. I'll watch our masked friend here. Cobra! <laughs> okay, Stormy. Let's see your Kung Fool. <clears throat> I'd finish you, Joe. But that would deprive me of the opportunity to humiliate you again someday. Pull some of that ninja hocus pocus on me. No matter. We shall meet again soon. Cobra's got a big head start. Ah, it doesn't matter. They'll never get past the primords. Primords? Mythical proto-human creatures. More ape than man. Oh, mythical, huh? Well, then they mythically wiped out my whole expedition. Expedition? Well, holy macaroni, you're Macintosh, the hermit. I'm Macintosh, aye, but I'm no hermit. I just live in an out-of-the-way neighborhood. Hmm. 
and that first step is mighty big. I hope you all tested this bridge. Not yet. We were just... Just about to do that. Oh, that Lady J's got guts, Flint. You like girls with guts? Professionally, yes. Personally, I'd like to see her stick around a while longer. <laughs> Cobra trouble bubbles. And claws. Yo, Joe! survivor yeah and we don't have time to worry we've got a mission to complete radio for the bridge lair the snakes are slithering back to their den freedom old friend i am glad to see you well i'd be gladder if i knew where we were any idea macintosh Nay, but I'll figure it out sooner or later. The satellite is somewhere west of us. If we find it, Flint will find us. Storm Shadow, what is your progress? I sense an extremely disturbing presence, Commander. I'm not interested in what you sense. I want that satellite. Storm Shadow has extraordinary intuition. I would not dismiss it lightly. Hmm, interesting. A cutting stone. My ancient ancestors made tools like this. But we're looking for a satellite spirit, not artifacts. You do not understand. This tool was made recently. Attack! Cobra! I did not think I still had it in me. Primals. But we need no worry. They're only mythical. Seen this kind of creature in museums, but these are a lot more lifelike and a lot less friendly. Fly, mighty one. Seek those who can aid us. There is a time to fight and a time to flee. It is wise. You know the difference. Time. It's taking too much time. Relax, Flint. Rome wasn't built in a day. Who needs Rome? All I want is one lousy bridge. Sorry, Dusty. I guess I'm worried about Lady J. It's okay. We all are. They may be primitives, but they make a good grade of rope. Maybe a little too good. This is a sacred place to them. A place of worship. Well, I'm glad it isn't their kitchen. This is not an honorable way for a warrior to meet his end. Then it should suit you perfectly. <sighs> you will suffer for that insult. Umbaga! A satellite. Why have they painted it like that? The fools think it's a god. And the blinking lights are its eyes flashing with anger. Anger? Uh, 
that anyone we know? Put it this way. If you got anything against human sacrifice, this would be a good time to leave. Morugu, Umbaga! You know, fellas, it doesn't have to be ladies first! Something mighty big went down here. From the laser burns on those trees, I'd bet Cobras and Joes were involved. Maybe Lady J did make it. What the? Flint! Over there! It's freedom! Where's spirit? Where's your master? Easy, Dusty. It's just a bird. It can't answer you. That bird wants us to follow him. Maybe he does. Let's go. Okay, it's true. I admit it. I use a hair rinse. Can I go now? Ginda. 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 Storm Shadow, unless we work together, we shall not live to resolve our differences. Agreed. We must unite against our common foe. Then, one day, I alone may defeat you. Freedom. Timbal! Timbal Kapu! Timbal! Anga! Sorry. Can't stay for the final act, but we've got a satellite to catch. I think we've worn out our welcome. Debt of honor. And we shall need all the help we can get. As my tribal shaman would say, let us depart this condition of being. In other words, let's split! Follow the path of least resistance. Watch out! Yo, Joe! Thought I'd be rooting for Storm Shadow. Well, let's get out of here. Oh, give me a break. It's their kids! Storm Shadow, no! What have you done? They're just children! They are enemies! Such ridiculous compassion for your foes is the Joe team's fatal weakness. Our alliance ends now! Thanks, but you can't stop them all! Lady J, I... I was worried about you. That doesn't exactly make me unhappy, you know. Spirit! 
good to see you. I don't believe it. There really are primords. Oh, nay, probably just the heat getting to you. The primords found the satellite, and Cobra now knows where it is. Yeah, well, Cobra's the least of our worries at the moment. Everybody, watch it. The boy must be the chief's son. Otto. Otto. <laughs> <laughs> Orto! Orto! Orto? What does it mean? <laughs> it means thank you. I saved his son's life, so we're friends now. I think. Well, good. Because we're going to need friends. as your code of honor was broken when you deserted us. No man accuses Storm Shadow of that, you least of all. Mind if I borrow this for a minute? Ugh. That is called teamwork. <laughs> Right, Yo Joe and Orto, thanks. Flint, up there. You wouldn't want to leave so soon. The fun's just beginning. Sorry, Joe. This bag's not big enough for the both of us. So long, Joe. Not our time, but there will be another time that I promise. You know, Flint, I'm not sure headquarters is going to be all that happy with the way you busted up their satellite. No sweat, Lady J. All the data is safely inside these computer chips. It is the Primords who should be upset. We dismantled their god. I just hope they're happy with the replacement we left them. And I hope they won't decide to worship it. Do not fear. The Primords are creatures of nature. 
they will know what to do with it. For fresher breath, it's just the best. For healthier gums, go get you some Happy Brush Toothpaste today. <laughs> Yo Cho! Yo Cho! Yo Cho! Yo Cho! Yo Cho! for Conjunction Junction. Conjunction Junction, what's your function? Hooking up words and phrases and clauses. Conjunction Junction, how's that function? I got three favorite cars that get most of my job done. Conjunction Junction, what's their function? I got and, button and or, they'll get you pretty far. And, that's an additive, like this and that. But, that's sort of the opposite, not this, but that. And then there's or, O-R, when you have a choice like this or that. And, button and or, get you pretty far. Conjunction Junction, what's your Hooking up two boxcars and making them run right. Milk and honey, bread and butter, peas and rice. Hey, that's nice. Dirty butt happy, digging and scratching, losing your shoe and a button or two. He's poor but honest, sad but true. Boo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Hooking up two cars to one when you say something like this. Choice, either now or later, or no choice. Neither now nor ever. Hey, that's clever. Eat this or that, grow thin or fat. Never mind, I wouldn't do that. I'm fat enough now. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Hooking up phrases and clauses that balance like out of the frying pan and into the fire. He cut loose the sandbags, but the balloon wouldn't go any higher. Let's go up to the mountains or down to the seas. You should always say thank you or at least say please. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Hooking up words and phrases and clauses in complex sentences like In the mornings when I'm usually wide awake, I love to take a walk through the gardens and down by the lake where I often see a duck and a drake. And I wonder as I walk by just what they'd say if they could speak. Although I know that's an absurd thought. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Hooking up cars and making them function. Conjunction, junction, how's that function? I like tying up words and phrases and clauses. Conjunction, junction, watch that function. I'm gonna get you there if you're very careful. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? I'm going to get you there if you're very careful. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? I'm going to get you That you did because it's no mystery what shall happen to you if you did not the 
two munchers! No! And if you haven't already, make sure you guys go mad that like button and subscribe to our channel and go head over to Kitchen Diesel and mash that button like button and subscribe to that channel as well. Max smashes for all. You know how it goes. If you have not already, make sure you do this before you exit. But also before you exit, make sure that you come in a little bit closer. So, remember when we were talking the other week and I was showing you guys the awesome laser disc, well, the beginning of the awesome laser disc collection that I am beginning to amass? Well, we have another addition to that collection. Whoop! That's right, we have The Lost World, Jurassic Park, and look, it's still in this plastic, bro. Now, the plastic is broken, obviously, because somebody wanted to watch it, but it's still in plastic, so it's protected. Now, I actually don't know what this is gonna be worth because it's the Lost World, not the actual Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park. And I don't know a whole lot of people who actually like this movie, but it is a laser disc nonetheless, and part of the laser disc collection that we will be showing you. And since we didn't have any artwork for today, that is what we are presenting before we get into the Max Squad masterpiece of the day. So get ready to gaze upon the masterpiece. And if you have a masterpiece of your own that you would like to send in to us, send it in to smc.maxout at a gmail.com. We will get it. We will process it. And we will put it up for you. And you will be able to see how wonderful your piece of artwork looks on a TV screen. But that's all that we have for today. We have the Toe Munchers. We are getting ready to get out of here because it's time to watch it. The closer. I'm still not going to tell you what it is because this is a mystery all the way through to the end. But I hope that you enjoyed the day and make sure that you hook up with us next week on Wednesday for Max Out Showcase. We had a random doubling up this Wednesday. I just was feeling a little froggy and wanted to put a little bit of extra entertainment up to kind of break apart the week. So if you haven't been checking out Max Out Showcase, go on over there and Hit us up. Hang out with us in the chat over there on Wednesday nights. I don't know why I keep saying over there because it's here. It's here, but just on Wednesday and not on today. So make sure that you hit us up on there and check us out on Friday Night Sucks because there was a little birdie who told me that Friday Night Sucks may be making its triumphant return as Animami may be making its not so triumphant exit. But yeah, I'm just because there's only a couple of places that you want to be in. One of them is this place right here with the KJ and the Gizzo. Is that right, Gizzo? That's right. Right here on the one and only place for Saturday morning cartoons that you have to guess what they have to do with each other. This is the one and only Saturday morning cartoon massage.
burn. Guess what? I was just up in my attic, and you won't believe what I found. Look at all this junk. My first toy. I had some fun with these suckers. Roger, Wilco, I'm hit bad. Can you bring me in? Yes, we can bring you in, Roger Wilco, on number 12. I see him, sir. I see him. He's approaching 12 right now. We got him on radar, sir. I can hear him. He's coming in clean. He's still got an engine. I just want to tell you, men, you've done a great service to Britain. We can't have Jerry hopping around among the hedgerows. No, we won't have it. Not if it takes every drop of British blood. Ah! Edna! Help! Edna! Ah! Spider! Ah! Medic! Give me my earth! Oh, no! What? I've got cobwebs all over me! I'm gonna be eaten alive by cobs! Edna! Boy, I bet Vern would like to see this. And here it is. The Ernest P. Worrell family album. <laughs> Do I look like I have stupid written all over my face? Burn my, 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 one, uh, burn my one hand. Burn. Stop working on that old antenna. I want you to see my family album. There's whorls from all over in here, buddy. The whorls practically did it all. Well, here's... Here's Dingus Worrell. He came over during the Great Potato Famine. He later went on to become a yam magnet. And then... Here's Corporal Davy Worrell. He was a real pioneer Indian fighter. He once saved a fort from Indian attack single-handedly. Or with one hand or all by himself. I don't know. Anyway, he was a sly old fox. He was caught outside the fort, and the Indians started chasing him across the countryside. He was running for his life. Personnel approaching fort, sir. Come on, you guys, let me in. It's me, Davy. Ah, oh, come on out. Folks from the settlement. Whiskey. Got a couple of two week furloughs to Tahiti. Uh -oh. Golly, Bob Howdy. Look at all them Native Americans. Pale face. Open gate. Steady, man. Hold your fire. Pony soldiers leave them this morning. Oh, reinforcements arrive this afternoon. Easy, man. Don't anybody get trigger happy. Identify yourself. I am Chief Running Vern, proud chief of entire Beigefoot Nation. Beigefoot? Well, more like off-white. More like I'm tan. Like color of wheat. Open gate, pale face. Get free gift. We don't want no free gift. Do we, men? Nay! None for me, sir. Well, I don't know. I, 
I could use a new toaster. Don't be crazy, old man. It's a trick. Well, I never fought the base, but before. Why don't you go lay down? Well, all right. Does that answer your question, red man? Hmm, kinda. Okay, Captain, have your men sound off. Yes, sir, Major. All right, men. You heard the Major? Yeah, send it off. It was good during one of them. Two. Was he... Was he two or three? He was three, Bozo. Try it again. Well, I was just thinking about maybe that free gift. I told you it's a trick. Now sound off. Well, Riley, you better be getting your men into position. Know what I mean? Oi, sir, me lads are ready for the wholesale slaughter. They were requesting, sir. Could we be in charge of torturing the prisoners? We won't be taking any prisoners this time, O'Reilly. None of them are gonna live through this. Hey, Cookie, better be getting some rations ready. Know what I mean? Yes, sir, I understand you. I know them boys get hungry after all that carnage. Mm-hmm, especially that Luke. Did he see him, Luke? Uh-oh. I'm scared. I'm scared. I've never been in a real fight before. There's nothing to worry about, son. We got him outgunned. And besides, we got Luke. I know. And that's why I'm scared. <laughs> hey, men, raise the flag. Okay, man, pass out them new rifles, know what I mean? Hey, these are nice. Repeaters. Hey, O'Reilly, look at this. Yeah. Looks like you can get your fist down the barrel. Hey, weren't these outlawed at Geneva? I think I'm gonna go show mine to Luke. Well, all right, Captain. I want you to get your men up on the north wall. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. All right, Simpson. Get your men ready. This ain't no god darn cakewalk. Yes, sir. Right away. All right, shock troops. It's a rotten, bloody war, but it's the only one we've got. All right. Have a face. Hail face, open gate. We teach you how to grow corn. We call it maize. Don't trust him, Captain. It's a trick. I know it's a god darn trick, Davy. I know a few god darn tricks myself. I learned them at West Point. Well, I gotta go check on Luke, see if them logging chains is holding it. He bit through the last ones. What's the matter, son? You homesick? No, sir. I'm real scared. I'm scared we're all gonna get scalped and killed and die in one big heap and, and not get no free gifts. Well, that ain't nothing to be ashamed of. We're all scared. You, sir? You're scared? Every time I go up against a beige foot. Beige foot? Well, not really beige, kind of an off-white. Kind of like, you know, an eggshell color. I'm afraid you're wrong there, Major. It's not quite an eggshell. It's not, it, it don't have that much yellow in it, you see. It's more, it's more like, uh, sort of like that, only not quite that bold. Like color of wheat. No, what do you know, Savage? I suppose you've been to some sort of Native American art school. Besides, you'll be dead soon. No, it's more like, um, you ever seen winter butter? Yeah, you volunteers, you settle down in there. Give a god darn one of you. Oh, sorry, sir. Uh, it's just being around all this ammo has got me and Luke and the boys a little overstimulated. As a matter of fact, if I had one of them beige foots in here right now, I'd, I'd probably cut his guts out with a rock. Yeah, I'll have to see you boys. 
something in his scrap. Yes, sir, and we consider Luke especially valuable to our unit. Well, you hear that, Luke? He, he's a character, ain't he? You know, sir, I've wiped out entire villages of Indian women and children, but Luke's done stuff that makes me heave. Make you heave? Well, I want you to know, uh, I think you're the human scum of the earth. And I mean that in the uh, nicest possible way. We aim to please. But what about the women and children? You mean the women or the children? I can't take it! I can't take it! Luke's escaped. Did he say I'm Luke loose? He chewed through the wall. The nightmare has begun. Uh-oh. We leave now, Pale Face. No free gift for you. But maybe you like this leaf catalog, huh? We be him back. And we'll be waiting for you, Tan Man. Right, man? Yes, yes sir. sir. They're turning tail and running. We done it, sir. We whooped them. Well, what about the free gift? Forget the free gift. Bless you, it's for Davy. You hip, hip, hooray! Corporal Davy Worrell, for bravery above and beyond the call of duty, in the face of a hostile enemy, it is my honor to present you with this Medal of Valor. Gosh, thanks, Major. Know what I mean? Well, come on, Cookie. Hustle it up and get us some grub ready. Yes, sir. Been getting that grub ready right now. I know how slaughtering them beige was make men hungry. Beige, it wasn't beige. Not as hard. So Davy finally retired from the Army and Indian fighting and went on to become both Lewis and Clark, a great bunch of guys. Know what I mean? And this here is Ace Worrell, the famous fighter pilot. His most daring and dangerous mission took place right here in the good old years of Savannah. You know what I mean? So what's up? Yeah, nobody's saying. I heard the old man say they were bringing in some hot shot from Washington. I've heard that before. <laughs> man, the situation is serious. I'm going to turn this briefing over to a man best qualified to handle an emergency like this. A man you may remember for his exploits at the Battle of Muscatel. A man who single-handedly turned the tide at the Battle of Escargot. A man I am proud to call my friend. A truly wonderful fighter pilot and a great human being. Lieutenant Ace Warren. That is. Men, we've got a problem. A serious problem. A problem only aviators the caliber of you men can solve. Men, a big monkey has crawled up on the Empire State Building and we've got to shoot him off of there. Sir, that's not scale, is it? What's the matter, soldier? You afraid of a little scrap? Afraid you might get your hands dirty? That's a trouble with you wimps. You ladies. One more crack like that, it's no more Mr. Nice Guy. Did you hear something? Boy, I sure did. A big monkey, a monkey, mind you, is sitting on top of the Empire State Building. Our Empire State Building. The one in New York City, New York. I've been there. And he's got a girl. Girl? You mean, you mean like a girl back home? I mean, he's got a girl, and it's just gone on too long. Her parents don't like it. He doesn't have a job. He has never been in the service. A visual aid. Our assignment is not just a simple mission over our nation's largest city, teeming with aliens.
taking our jobs, our money, talking funny. No. No. It's much more than that. The success or failure of this mission will determine the future of all homo sapii. That's me and you. So if any of you believe in evolution and believe that you are in some way related to this thug, I want you to step up here right now and ground yourself. I didn't think so. We'll come in low. Keeping the morning sun in his eyes. Dazzling the dumb ape with aerial acrobatics not seen since the sea of Chateau. We'll circle round and round the hairy ape. His hairy body with hot lead. But hey, what about the girl? The girl? Don't worry about the girl. Any one of us can whip the girl. Just swoop in as low as you can to that ape's belly, luring the greedy menace. With a banana bomber. And as he reaches his stubby, hairy, ape-like fingers skyward. Look out, Lefty. Lefty, look out. What's he done to you, Lefty? You, you ape! Where's my machine gun? Where's my little machine? Where's my little machine gun? Where's my machine gun? Lead cheetah. Bad monkey, bad monkey, bad monkey, bad monkey, bad monkey, bad monkey, bad monkey. Any questions? Yep. The worlds have had their share of national heroes and national symbols, but if you got it, flown it. Vern, that's my great uncle Lloyd. You know, every family's got its dark side, Vern, and the Worrells is no exception. My great uncle Lloyd was the meanest man in the whole world, possibly that ever lived, and proud of it. Go on, get out of my way, you mangy old flea harbor. Can't hunt, can't fit. Can't guard you. Can't stay out of my way. Oh, Daddy, don't do that to old Spud. He hates it when you do that. It makes him twitch funny. That's it, boy. Pack up some old hound again your own flesh and blood. Poor starving old gut like me. Ain't got a pair of socks between me and Europe. Ruth, ah, oh, Ruth, is supper ready? Rock away again. Huff, lift for me. Let me hide myself in me. Ruth, what are we pretending like we having for supper tonight? Take 
steak, huh? I was kind of hoping we'd pretend like we had lobster tonight. You know how fond I am of seafood. It's tender, though. Cut with a fork. Where's that boy in my steak? Ain't you called him to supper yet? There he is. Look at him. Six foot three, 265 pounds. He's only eight years old. What is it? What is it, Daddy? What is it? What is it? Look at him playing. That's just a mistake. Bust up all your toys. Daddy will get you a new one. Yeah, Daddy's rich. Daddy's rich. Okay. You know, I've tried to punish that boy. I've tried to whoop on him or beat him with a split rail. But no, I reckon I'm going to have to start working on him psychologically. You know, Ruth, you shouldn't have fixed up all these delicacies like this. We're smart enough as it is. Mistake! Ah, oh, mistake! Wait, Daddy! Don't start without me! All right, ready? Set? Here's me as he's actually a gaining weight. Don't eat your steak like that mistake. It'll choke you. Eat you some of this lobster you're so fond of. Oh, Daddy, we had lobster last night. Well, I guess you won't. Spaghetti. Yeah, Daddy, skinny, skinny. Here, yeah, get you some of that Parmesan cheese on that. I'm working on them psychologically. Look at you, mistake, getting that spaghetti all over your face. Ain't you got any manners, boy? Go on, get out of here and get to bed. Oh, Daddy, how come I always got to go to bed? <laughs> He's a good boy, Lloyd. No. No, he ain't a good boy. He's dangerous. As if I ain't got enough stuff to trouble me, the Lord's got to give me that animal in there to live with. That's it, Lord. Just dump it right down here on old Lloyd. I can take it. I've got to get in there, Ruth, and make sure that boy's pretending to brush his teeth. Oh. He's a good boy, Lloyd. Mustache? Are you pretending like you're asleep, Pitt? I'm going to work on his mind. You want Daddy to read you a bedtime story? Yeah, Daddy, a story, a bedtime story. Daddy's gonna read to you here from the big book. Let me see. Yeah, here it is. This here's from Second Condominium. Six. Seven, three, five, four, two, three, extension 12. One day there will be a boy named Mistake, born to Ruth and Lloyd Worrell, and he will catch mumps and measles again. 
and catch on fire and fall off the edge of the world and mash his fingers and die before he is twelve. Nighty night, mistake. Daddy? What? You won't rock me to sleep? All right. Here, Daddy. Use my rock. <laughs> I'm working on his mind. Vernon, when are you going to give it up? You can't fix this old TV. Y'all let me have a crack at it. I got a real talent for electricity. And speaking of talent, this is my cousin, Billy Boogie Worrell, most talented man in our family, a real celebrity. As we speak, Vern, he is at the helm of a gigantic entertainment complex, know what I mean? Seeds in a blur of blind and speed, leaving your earthly body behind, leaving you to skate with your mind. <laughs> boogie. Feel the boogie begin and rush from way down deep within. Come on, kids, fill his hip, but remember, I am the captain of this ship. Just hang on tight and don't die of fright. Captain Billy's gonna take you out of sight. Oh, youngsters. Huh. <laughs> Wrap your little fingers around the bar. Then you better wish upon a star, as Captain Billy's gonna make you sicker than you are. Wanna ride? Something fast enough to strip your hide. But we both have terrible heart conditions. Never too young, never too old. There's no age limit to the bowl. But, but his heart. <laughs> but, but my condition would never. Don't worry, Mama. Billy's hip. But remember, I'm the captain of this ship. <laughs> Just hang on tight and don't die of fright. Captain Billy's gonna take you out of sight. Boogie. Right this way, sweet Madonna of the Midway. Let Billy make you boogie all alone. Oh, hold the phone. I'm a crazy dancer, a mad dog handler. Enjoy your ride, sir, on the scrambler. Boogie. Speaking, today we'll be flying at an altitude of tropospheric proportions. At a velocity of Mach cubed. So put on your high heel sneakers. Well, heel, did you say well? Boogie. Boogie rush begin from way down deep within. <laughs> Billy Boogie's gonna take you there. You're gonna feel like you're floating on air. Hear your heart begin to pound to the deadly disco sound. Boogie. Let's do it some more. Come on, take a chance. Let's let it look and show you how to roll. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, sure, uh, I don't mind, uh, TV dinner. 
Could you thaw them this time? Yeah, yams are good. They're better deal. I don't care what you found in his room. We'll kill it. Just a minute, would you? Right, let your mind slide clean out of sight. Just relax and leave your body behind. Oh, let's dance. Yeah, Billy Boogie World has taken you to the top. But sad but true, even good things must stop. Thank you for flying Scrambler Airways with Captain Billy. I always reach my destination with a great deal of stimulation. Boogie. Do not leave your seats before the spinning beast has come to a halt. And please exit left as you come out of the octopus. And tell all your little gal friends, Billy Boogie is back. Well, there's your problem right there, Vern. See that little wire down there? It's got a short in it. This one, Mark. This one right here. My daddy's got the other glove. Boy, Vern, this sure is a slow game. I'd rather be playing cards. And speaking of playing cards, my great granddaddy, Rich Worrell, he was a card player. Won and lost vast sums on the Mississippi. Sometimes just at the turn of a car. See that and raise you, Verna. <gasps> They've been going together for three years. Oh, I fold. I don't have a woman. Are we to believe, sir, that you are light in your loafers? Say, can I go home and get my sister? You know the rules table stakes. Oh, well. Maybe we could get my wife and put her in the pot and don't tell her. And what if you lost her? You tell her. <laughs> How rude! Ah, uh, that was nothing. Now that leaves you and me, Mr. Rich World. What's it gonna be? I trust my credit is good here, sir. I'll see your woman and call you, sir. <laughs> Trip hooks. Hold it fast. I believe a full boat. Dust boat! Beats trip hooks. Your word would have been sufficient, sir. Reg, I'm glad you won me. <laughs> Just one more hand, world. Just you and me. This time we're gonna raise the stakes. <gasps> or are you just a <laughs> Freddy cat? Freddy cat? Well, sir, I consider that an insult. No Worrell has ever been called a Freddy Cat, to my knowledge. 
thank you, my dear. Fruit cake, fritter brain. Nope. No Wara has ever been called a Freddy kid. All right, Wara. I'll put up my saloon and all my dance hall girls just to win Verna back. <laughs> no gentleman would refuse. Have it your way, fat man. Ranch, you can beat him. Stick with me, Verna, and you'll be wearing buffalo chips as big as diamonds. <laughs> Good luck, Ranch. Sure. No, thank you, sir. I'm just fine the way I am. <gasps> He's got a straight. Maybe a straight flush. Maybe a royal flush. Could be nothing. Three. <gasps> He's got a pair. Working on a full house. Maybe he'll draw four of a kind. Could be nothing. <laughs> well, Rich, look like Vernon won't have to move things after all. For the saloon and all the dance hall girls, <laughs> beat a pair of queens and a pair of bullets. <laughs> <Bullet. laughs> well, come on, show your cards. <laughs> It's a straight. Or a flush. Or a royal flush. <laughs> ah, it's nothing. Come on, world. <laughs> oh, a straight. Full house. Full of a can. Come on, world. You're bloody. <laughs> Ten, a queen, a seven, a two, and a four, all different suits. <laughs> That's right. It's a terrible hand. Do you know what they say? Them's the grits. <laughs> Ranch, you idiot. You bluff with nothing. No raises. Nothing. Well, you know, Verna, life is kind of like a card game. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But you know, I could have sworn that a noble flush beat three of a... No. No, two pairs beats a full... No. Reg, you're so incredibly stupid. Fiddle to dee, Verna. Tomorrow is another day. You know, sir, I was always led to believe that if you had a little gentleman in a yellow hat and a little gentleman in a red hat, especially in conjunction with the rather plain lady with the cue beside her head, Mama? Didn't see that, did you? Crown me. And here's me and my granddaddy. I loved old Pop. He'd been everywhere and done everything, all at the same time. Hey, Pop! Wake up, Pop! Come on, Pop! Wake up! Well, look out, that redhead's got a gun. Look out. And down the little corner slipped around over there. I'll tell you how to play the third base and you boys over there. Look, it ain't coming! Pop, be Let's go fishing, Pop. No oh, rain. it's a little early. Come to see your pop, baby. Let's go fishing, Pop. Well, help me up, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Chip cookies last forever by using baked on enamel and high explosives. Then she took up with a guy who kept a bunch of those old World War I torpedoes in the front of a 36 Chrysler. Did you ever see a gypsy woman take her ring and turn it into a tablecloth? Of course, that was in 34. You don't remember 34. Ernie, you having fun? Yes, sir. Well, me too. This looks like a good spot to you, Quee Quee. Uh, How's the fishing going to be, Quee Quee? Ernie, 
See if you can get that little worm on that hook for me. You got it? Oh, you got it. You got a hook in there, huh? Well, here, let me get that for you. I ain't used that knife there since I got it that buzzing. Oh, I got one, Ernie, look. I got a big one, too. Still got the scar. That's just the way it happened. You know, Vern, since me and you are such pals, such buddies, almost like brothers, I think you ought to be in my family album with the rest of my loved ones. Now hold still, because I'm going to take your picture. Okay, smile. It's one of these new 10 second jobs. You know, Vern, I didn't realize you had a kind of a. You know, it looks like. Look at this. You... Duh. Edna! <laughs> well, anyway, that's when that blonde that, uh, that was a Nazi spy had run away from where they had her in prison and made a small fortune in Naga Hyde lingerie. We made her move to Toronto and sent Harriet up there to feed her. That's back when Harriet crash landed that flying tiger airplane in the parking lot of the First National Bank of Billings, Montana, and caught a strange virus that she gave to Queequay and he took to London and traded it for the 36 Chrysler. Then we seen Carol Lawrence. I was sitting on an I-beam and opened my lunchbox and inside was a piece of the great white buffalo.